today. My name is Hannes Knutze. I'm from the University of Pretoria in Pretoria, South Africa, and I am one of the conveners of the Family, Youth and Children Ministry Group at the EOMS uh, Association. And um, I am together with my colleague, uh, Valentin, and I want to ask him to introduce himself. Thank you, Hannes. Uh, it is a joy, or I would say, we're just happy to have this organized so that we have um, the opportunity to show to a wider audience what we have produced in the last uh, five or six years since the study group Children, Youth and Missions uh, already functions within the International Association for Mission Studies, or IAMS. I have been within IAMS for some 20 years now, and in the last 10 years I, I am on the executive committee, and IAMS is organizing every four years international conferences as IAMS is an international, and it is also in the confessional and interdisciplinary professional society for the scholarly study of a Christian mission, Christian witness, and also its impact in the world. And now this book, which we are discussing today, is the result of the activities which we have been doing within this study group, Children, Youth and Mission. Originally, I am from Bulgaria, but teaching uh, at, uh, as a university professor and lecturer for more than 30 years. But then it happened that the British Church Mission Society invited me to become a missionary, and they sent me to Russia. So for some eight years, I was there, and it is there in Russia when I found that the study of mission or missiology is an important topic within Christian theology. And this is where I started also teaching missiology and I got involved more and more with IMs. And I was happy when in 2016 we organized one of the conferences where Professor Hannes and I, we met and we were just thinking how to organize the study group so that it functions more in a more adequate way within IAMS. And this is how the, the idea of the book came. We published one book before this one, and now this is our second book. Even uh, uh, um, among this uh, uh, study group, and that's why I'm happy that now this could be spread wider. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Valentin, um, for for this introduction of IAMS and everything. Um, maybe you can uh, help us, and and from from where you are situated and your contacts, um, elaborate a bit more on some of the important topics that you find in in the in the book. There are. 14 chapters in the book, which have been written by 12 authors. It is very interesting and we are so lucky to have uh, scholars and contributors coming from different countries. But it is also very good that we have half of the authors, six authors, they come from South Africa. I, I mean, from Africa in general, but most of them from South Africa. And the other six authors, they come from other countries of the world, mostly from Europe, but also India. And this diversity <coughs> of authors, this, this diversity of topics, <coughs> which these uh, contributors, they offer to, to us, makes this book unique. We can find, find within these uh, 12 topics and two additional chapters, diverse, uh, interesting, contextual analysis, where people from different countries, they tell their stories, which in fact then we find that they are not just local stories, but they are just stories which may happen in every place in the world. And this is where we were discussing globalization, 
now globaliz globalization now came to such an extent that now everything what happens in one location, it also may happen in other locations. And most of, I liked, especially as a European, I mostly liked you know, the contributions coming from Africa. Because there are things, as we you know, we learn all the time until we live. There are many things which I learned I've, I've never known, although I have been teaching for more than 30 years on university level. I also guess that also our African colleagues have learned something from the European colleagues, the European contribution contributors. And that's why I find this unique book. What is unique is that now we can see different interpretation of what is globalization. Now we can find in literature many, many uh, um, uh, different definitions. What is globalization? But it is another thing to find a definition coming from practitioners, from, pre, from people from different contexts who struggle to overcome some challenges which globalization pose today and has posed for the last two or three decades. And that's why I found, for example, let me see one African, one African saying, which I found in one of the articles. Uh, it takes a village to raise a child. It's, it's true, really. This is also true for other cultures, but I like this very much as this was presented in African contexts. But then the authors say, but it also may take a village to lose a child. So it depends what, what the village does to raise the, the, the next generation. Now it came to me then, we can also rephrase this in this way. It takes a world to raise a child and it may take a world to lose a child. So in this globalized world, what we do as teachers, as pastors, as parents, as just ordinary people, what we do so that we raise the next generation in the way we want to see it, uh, we as Christians in the way as the Bible tells us, how we raise our children. So these are the unique, the unique things which we can find in this book, which cannot be found in any other book. So this is unique, unique about the book. But maybe you, Professor Harris, you can also focus on, uh, on some African perspectives or more general on some of the topics of the, of the book. Thank you, thank you, Valentin. I, I first want to talk about, in a broader sense, about the broad topics of the book, like like mission and the whole connection and interconnection between mission and globalization and family and youth ministry. Um, teaching missiology at the university, I realize, and also family and youth ministry, I realize the gap between the two. And and coming from Africa and realizing Africa is a youth continent where more than 60 percent of the of the population is under the age of 30. Yes. Um, uh, it, it brings a huge uh, uh, opportunity uh, for for mission or for the church um, to the to the to the context um, and but but we also realize in a globalized world previously mission worked from a power position mm -hmm. Think uh, from from uh, colonialism and 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 uh, and Christendom era, and now we are in a post-Christendom era with a globalized world, and now we, uh, mission has become vulnerable in a certain sense, yes. and mission becomes from the margins and and from the marginalized. Uh, if we see that the whole Christianity has moved to the south and to the east, more specifically. So um, I, I think this is a very timeless book and very timeless topics that was choose to, to write on. And the thing about globalization is that nobody owes it. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a global economy and we have global technology, but we don't have a global religion. Uh, uh, or global values in which we treat people um, uh, answering the difficult life questions of identity and, and purpose of life, etc. And, and then 
Um, the 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 last broad remark I want to make about families is that in a globalized world, we a broken world. We have broken families, a lot of broken families. Um, for instance, in South Africa, um, more than 65 percent of the birth certificates don't have the name of a father on them. Um, so we also live, in a sense, in a fatherless world. And one of the contributors in, the, in this book um, uh, uh, from, from South Africa, uh, Professor Friaks, also wrote about this, and he related it to community engagement and, and how, what is the role that the church can play in, in this regard. Yes. Other important topics that I find from, from Africa is the whole identity question. We have a contribution from South Africa as well from, from Europe about identity and how to form identity and the importance of identity. Um, we have also uh, the whole thing of globalization and, and connectedness uh, in, in, the, in this era uh, about discipleship. And then uh, another important um, contribution for me, or, or two at least, is one from, from Prof. Branston talking about families in an age of migration. Yes. And where, where do we belong and where does children belong in this, this whole process, the whole question of belonging. And, and then um, in, in a globalized world, and maybe um, it, it comes from Africa, is a, is a, a chapter um, on uh, the topic is not abortion, but it is about abortion. And it is titled the child sacrifice in a sense. Now in Africa, that is also a reality, child sacrifices still in some, some um, nations. So... Um, I, but I think it's also a very important topic in, in the whole world around family planning uh, and how do we deal. So I think a lot of ethical questions mm, yes. uh, comes to the fourth uh, within the context of mission and globalization and family and, and youth ministry. Um, so uh, um, and, and also the question of intergenerational dialogue. Um, is is a very uh, interesting chapter and yes. important in in this book. But talking about intergenerational um, Valentine, maybe we can conclude the discussion, and then you can talk about um, the the three topics: power, inequalities, and vulnerabilities, um, that also are part of the of the topic of this book, please. We can probably say that power has always existed within human history. So there always were people or organizations who would exercise power over the wider society. <clears throat> so it's nothing wrong with power. What sometime, sometimes is wrong is how this power is exercised. So how we can justify <clears throat> any impact of this power on ordinary people. We can say that in the past and even today, um, many societies, they, they can say that they live, I would say, fairly, in a fairly uh, justifiable situation. I mean, both powers and powerless, they would live, um, I would say, well, peacefully, they would live cooperating with each other. Because, as we know, often people need power, often people need to be led to, into their future. This is, for example, how we see things in the church. We have a leader, well, in the face of Jesus Christ, but we have a leader who leads the congregation, who leads the people. But power also can be abusive. And now we can see, and that's why we chose this topic for the IAMS conference, which was supposed to take place last year in 2020. But because of the, of the pandemic, we could not organize it. Now the conference is postponed for July 2022. We don't know whether 
whether the conference will take place or not. But we chose within IAMS this topic because powers seems today to go along also with, in, uh, with inequalities, with, with vulnerabilities. So power often is abusive term and practice, what we see in many societies. I liked one, one topic of, of the book, uh, this is chapter 10, where the title is Community Engagement Addressing Powers, Inequalities and Vulnerabilities. It is very important, I thought for myself. So addressing all challenges which powers may, how to say, when, when it is abusive, it is a community work. We can see the whole world as a community. We can see our church or we can see our institution, the university, the village, the town. So addressing these challenges, truly it is a community engagement. And also one other, one other uh, chapter when one author uh, entitled his work, Who Am I? And then he continues, finding identity in a globalized world. Many people think, well, nowadays people seem to have lost their identity because now everything can be found in the internet. Everyone who is in the internet seems, people seem, or especially young people seem to be the same. They do the same things. So what identity do they have? We need to, and this author suggests, we need to keep our identity as it is, as I believe as a Christian, as it, as it was created by God. We need to keep this identity and to affirm this identity within our local community. Even in this way, we can enrich also other identities, also other cultures. So this is one of the unique things of this book. And that's why I'm probably trying to finish with this one that we address powers, inequalities and vulnerabilities by affirming our identity also within the framework of this globalized world where we live, won't we do this or not, but we need to contribute and each of us can contribute for the future of this world by keeping their unique identity, which is precious, of course, in the eyes of God. Thank you so much, Valentine. I, I believe that the readers will find something they can relate with and will enrich their understanding. And may we all become vulnerable in this situation. And may the Lord bless us with his power. Yes. Well, thank you for this conversation.